Welcome to this God-inspired message from Shofar Christian Church. Enjoy today's message. May you experience the presence of our Father and may you grow deeper in your relationship with Him. So awesome just being able to take time in the Lord's presence just to dwell and allow Him to be God in our lives. So thank you so much for being here. Those who came in a little bit later, welcome. It's great having you with us. And I'm going to hand over to my wife, and she's going to share the Word with us. She is not always a big fan of standing in front. She likes being behind and one-on-one, and she leads our counseling team and is much better at listening to people's challenges than I am. I want to just fix the challenge so we can go on with life, and she has the patience to listen and work through the hurt and the grace around all of that, and she's going to share with us a little bit tonight. Hello. feels a lot less intimidating than this morning. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, like Philip said, this is not what I do. I'm not a pastor, so I'm not going to use fancy words and big methods, whatever. I'm going to talk... I'm actually going to talk from a place that, that, that was very recent. But before I go into that, let me just open in prayer. Okay, Father, I just bring this message before you. And I thank you that you are an amazing God. You are a good God. Even in the mess around us. Lord, I ask that you will guide my words tonight. And that your presence and your spirit will, will help us hear what we need to take away with us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I titled this one... It had a lot of names, <laughs> but I ended with hope. Um, and it is, I said this morning as well, usually when I, when I talk, if, if I talk anywhere, I like to know what I'm talking about. I do a lot of, like, I want to really believe in what I'm about to say. This topic for me was very difficult because I found myself recently to feel hopeless without hope. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit, but... The whole time while I was, and then, of course, in all of the stuff that was going on, Philip said to me a few weeks back, remember, you, I've, I've given you a slot to talk. I'm like, I'm not ready. I don't, I don't have anything to say. I feel too hopeless to talk. Um, and then I felt God say, but go to Proverbs 13, verse 2, and talk about that. Um, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And this scripture, I was like, Lord, I I can't talk about this. I can talk about this for five minutes. What am I going to say? This is just one sentence. And then God just said to me, but sit with it. Um, So I'm going to unpack it a bit tonight. And hopefully I will make sense as I go along. All right. So the the first thing that I really just want to stop at and say is often in counseling, when people come and they tell me their stories, I sit there and I think, Lord, the, this person has lost hope. Their story is big, the problems are big, life is big, but they have lost hope. And how can, how can we find hope again? And we talk about faith a lot. We talk about love a lot. But hope tends to be this mystical, mysterious concept. What gives us hope? What do you put your hope in? And what steals your hope? It's more of an abstract thing. How do I, what do, how do I get it? How do I understand it? Um, And I don't know if I'm going to answer your questions, but I'm going to try to at least get you thinking tonight. So what is hopelessness? It is this place where people say, I can't do this anymore. Is this really it? You get questions like, but how can a good God? Um, And it leads to a lot of other things. Hopelessness, it leads to a lot of other stuff that can come from it, even a lack of faith. Um, now, I don't want to say that, that hope is... Well, I'm going to touch quickly on mental health because often in, in, when I talk to people who's got depression or anxiety disorders or serious things, there is this lack of hope. But lack of hope or finding hope might not fix everything. It's, mental health is more complicated than that. But definitely an ingredient in what I see is that people lose hope or they cannot define hope anymore. Um, and sometimes I find people and they just look like they're breathing. And that for me is, is something 
that I see a lot, and I think we all see it and sometimes get those days where you wake up and you go through the daily thing. I go do my job, or students, you study. I don't know. It's been many years ago for me. But um, I also don't know if, if maybe we lose hope a little bit more as we get older. I don't know. I know the crowd here is a bit younger. But I remember being younger and always being filled with hope. Tomorrow's going to be better. There's always hope. And as we get older, I think maybe we get, um, in Afrikaans the word is ontnuchter, but you get maybe disillusioned by some of the things that keep on happening. Okay, so let's look at what is hope. Um, it is a feeling of expectation and a desire for a particular thing to happen. It is an expectation, a daydream, longing, yearning, craving, hankering. So there's a lot of things that maybe we can we can define hope with. Now, if we go to that scripture that I started with, it says hope, def- hope deferred makes the heart sick. And that I think we see. How sometimes if we lose hope, the consequences are that we actually get some kind of illness or some kind of sickness of the heart, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but then it says, a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. So in the scripture, I was thinking, all right, so hope definitely has to do with seeking things, longing for something. So if these longings that we want are the key to finding hope, then maybe we must go there. Um, and I'll get to that in a bit. But before I go there, I just want to ask if, you yeah, just think a bit, what are the stuff that gives you hope and what is the things that, that steals your hope? Because I've got a few listed up there. For me, um, I think uh, history repeating itself definitely steals my hope. And I'm not just talking about global history repeating itself, sadly. I'm talking about, I struggle with something. Hello? I do it again. Hello? <laughs> And the mic does it again. Person history repeating itself. Is that the trick one or something? Should I wait a bit? Speak slower so that I don't sound like I'm rapping. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. So, repeating itself. All right, let's give this one a try. So, history repeating itself is definitely something that steals hope. Um, and now, like I said, it's not just if you look at politics or the world. It's also in our personal lives, in relationships. I'm trusting my child to stop doing that, but they're doing it again. How many times do I have to tell them to stop doing that? I'm struggling with something. Why can't I just change? Why can't I just get this thing? And the more stuff like that hope happens, the more it deflates our hope. Um, suffering, disease. But I want to summarize this as sin. In counseling, I, I, I actually, um, I'm a Christian counselor, so if the p- people allow me to go there, some people um, come for counseling and they don't want, then I don't go there. But if I can go there with people, then I have a discussion about their understanding of sin and their understanding of why Jesus came. Because those two things are big filters that we process the world through. If our concept of sin and our concept of why Jesus came is unhealthy, then we are processing the bad stuff through the wrong filter. Um, Sin for me, in short, is people doing what they want to do the way they want to do it, not God's way. That is, in short, for me, what happens. And the consequences of that is everywhere. The consequences are people deliberately hurting other people, some guy in Russia deciding to, you know, to do something. People make decisions, and it affects other people. But the And we can easily look at these things. If we talk about big stuff, it's easy to think of them far away. But in our close circle, if I want something to happen and it's not happening, it's easy to get upset and hopeless with this individual and this individual and this individual. But I want you to step back a bit and say, to understand that there is a big player on the field. And this player is sin. Yes, Jesus came. He did bring new life. There is hope with him. But this player is still very much active, and he does not play nice. So sin is still a very real thing around us, and that affects the world around us. So often we need to be able to step back and just be real about sin. Um, It is not who God is. It is not his plan. 
if we look at all the brokenness and we look at the story of redemption through Scripture, sin is not God's plan. Jesus is. A new life is. An eternal life. That is God's plan. Okay. But I'm not going to go on to that too much tonight. That is a sermon on its own. And now I've mingled up my notes. Um, okay. So let's go back to that scripture in the beginning and say, all right, we are looking at hope deferred. That makes the heart sick. Okay, I get that now. And we get that there's a player on the field, and this player also affects how we see the world, and the world is broken, and this affects, it affects things. Um, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Now, I've, I don't know if I, where I put that photo up, but somewhere I put a photo up of, a, of an older lady looking in a mirror. That is often, it's just an image I found. You see, you see these things on, on social media a lot. I actually love the photos. We have an older person looking in the mirror and they see themselves younger. Um, but this concept is often, I think, how we look for hope. I, I need something else than what I have. The concept of looking for something different to what I have. Um, now that we do have physical longings that do need to be fulfilled, like our bodies, hungry, sleep, thirst, health, physical, all those things. Um, soul, th or stuff like emotional safety, loved, feeling worthy, belonging, intellectual stimulation. All of those things are good longings. We need them. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we look at these things as stuff that's going to fulfill this hope, then it's very fragile. Because it's easy to say, if I lose weight, or if I get this job, or if I get that car, or if I want this, whatever, then I will find something. There's some, I'll be at some place. Um, and then we put our hope in that thing. Because hope leads to joy, and hope leads somewhere. But if I put my hope in the wrong place, then I'm not going to the right place, if it makes sense. Okay, so I want to say there's a deeper longing. When I read the scripture, um, for me saying a longing fulfilled is a tree of life, when I read this, I don't read a longing as in material things or even physical things. It's a longing for us to get home. It's a longing for us to be with God. It's a longing to be in his family. It's a deeper longing. And I actually want to go so far as to say that I don't think on this side of eternity that longing is ever going to be fed. Yes, Christ is enough. Yes, Jesus is enough for everything. But we only see in part. We only get in part. So the more we get to know him, yes, the more we do get filled. But we don't have the full picture yet. Um, he's created us for an eternity with him. He's created us for a different plan. Um, so I want to go so far as to say that I think there's a longing in us that might not be fulfilled. And that longing being there is not bad. It's actually reminding us that this is not it. There is something else coming. So uh, having said that, uh, the next slide I've got there is in eternal perspective. Now, what do we do with these things? The one thing is definitely to, to try and, I don't want to, what's the word in English? Philosophia, philosophy. <laughs> Philosopher, whatever that word is. <laughs> Philosopher? What's the word? Is that the word? I don't know. Okay, anyway, that word. About eternity and what eternity is going to be like and where we're going to be and all that stuff. But what I do know is that God set eternity in the human heart. I think we all know there's more. <laughs> this is not meant to be it. So there is a hope that we have for something to come that we do not understand yet. And part of this is that we are heirs to this promise. We are heirs to this place where we can go. Okay, so, but that's not looking far away. I think if you've been a Christian for a while and maybe you've done Bible school already, then maybe you've, you've dealt and chewed around the fact of eternity. If you haven't, Bible school is really awesome to talk through these things and to try and understand these concepts. But maybe that's not, you know, that's not the, the big thing for you is to wonder about this eternal thing. Maybe to ask the question, okay, but okay, I get that Jesus came for me to be a Christian. I get that Jesus came for me to be saved. I get that. But what does it mean for me today? And this is what Jesus says. He stepped into the synagogue and he opened the scroll of Isaiah and he read this out. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort those who mourn, to provide for those for us, no? to provide for those in mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness, another translation says. Jesus took the scripture and he says, this is my job description, this is who I am. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much that we can talk about here why Jesus is the fulfillment of all our longings and why he is the hope that we need. Um, but I almost feel like there's too much to say there. So I'm, I'm not going to go on to that place. I just want to step back and say, all right, so we know we're talking, about, we're talking about longings, we're talking about hope, and we're talking about brokenness around us. But what am I supposed to do with all of this? Now, my response that I've got here is basically it's three things. The first thing is that we need to accept what is. Often in counseling, I talk to people and there's a big, but it shouldn't be like this. I shouldn't be going through this. This is not the way it should be, which is fair questions. Those are fair questions. That's perfect. But if you stay there, it becomes hopelessness and despair. Because there's a place where we have to look around and say, okay, but this is what I have, whether I want it or not. There's that thing on social media at a while back that with it around, not my circus, not my monkeys. Do you guys see that one? Nobody saw that one. Oh, my word. I thought it was very funny. And as moms, we always talk about it. It's not my circus, not my monkeys. But the reality is these kids are my circus and these kids are my monkeys. <laughs> anyway, so the reality of it, sometimes people use things like that to step away because they actually want to dissociate from this, the chaos or from the thing. And we can do that with sin, we can do that with a lot of stuff, just to keep it a little bit away, because I can't deal with it, but you're not going to find hope that way. Just avoiding the thing. The first step is to acknowledge this is what we have. That's why I also say acknowledge that sin is real. Because if we don't face it as a threat, then we don't treat it as a threat. If we don't see that there's something in me or around me that's really not good, but I just tolerate it, then nothing, I'm not going to get the hope back. Okay, so you have to accept what is, um, what is going on. And on the one side, which is the sin part of it, on the other side, there's the hope part. Accept that Jesus says he brings hope and that he is enough. Now, what that means for everybody is, is a more difficult topic to talk about like this. Um, but that is a conversation I often have in counseling, where lots of people grow up in ch churches or Christian homes, or they know of Jesus, and they have a philosophy about Jesus, but he's not real in their day-to-day. -day. They, they haven't seen him active in their day-to-day. -day. And this is a, something I actually want to leave with you, is to ask you, have you encountered Jesus like that as a person in your day-to-day -day so that you can understand what he means when he says he is the hope? Okay, so the first one is to get real with sin. And also together with that is to know that this is not it. God has an eternal plan. He has a plan for salvation. He has a plan to, redore, to restore us to him. So that is a hope that nobody can take away. And we've got nothing to do with that. Nothing you do, nothing you are, nothing you say or don't do can change this thing about what God has done through Jesus. It's just something we have to accept. Um, the next one is to actively search for hope. Like I said in the beginning, I think hope is sometimes this philosophical, you find it in songs and in poems and whatever. But or if you ask somebody, what are you hoping? They say, I hope I get this job. I hope I get you know, time to get to McDonald's or whatever. It's practical things about what I need. But what I'm trying to get here is that there is a deeper hope that we should be searching for. And it doesn't just come. It's not a fluffy feeling that makes me feel good. It's a choice. I hope in something bigger than me. I hope. And then in counseling, I always tell people, in the Old Testament, the Israelites, every time they went through something, they would build an altar. And that thing was representing the, 
the, the, the victory or the story that they went through. Um, and I encourage people to do that. To, to do that. <laughs> Sorry again. I encourage people to do that. Because our life is full of stuff. And we can run around, go from the one thing to the next thing. And then one day we're like, oh, I lost hope. But if you built your altars, and you can go back and remember what God did. And you remember his faithfulness. You remember who he is. And it builds our hope and our faith. Um, so then the last one I've got here is like the ingredient, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that he's going to go away to leave something with us that is greater than him. Now, that has always bowled me. How can Jesus say he's going away and leave something greater? What could be greater than to have Jesus here? And then I, when I talk about, to the kids about this, but they're like, Mom, he can't be everywhere. So if he's on earth, then where, where is he going to be? Are we going to follow him on Twitter? Are we going to watch him on the news? You know, we can't, he can't be everywhere. But the Holy Spirit can. So God gave us this, not, it's not a magic ingredient, um, but I watch a lot of fairy tales with my girls these days, and I, I'm loving some of the stuff we're, we're watching. But there's, there's, this, there's a gift that God comes, and he gives us the Holy Spirit. It's not magic. It's not mystical. It's real. It's a person that's with us, and he explains these things to us. He helps us find these these um, pebbles, if you want to call them that, of hope, so that we can actually collect them purposefully. And then just the last one I've up, got up there is to always be ready, because there's always hope. Uh, where's this one that I go? And I go from 15. Uh, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord, and always be prepared to give an answer to anybody who asks, to give a reason for the hope that is in you. That is something that I have found really distinguishes Christians from a lot of other people. Um, I didn't share this this morning, but I've recently counseled a lady. I'm not going to give any details, but she's struggling with a very severe illness. And I, I listened to her story, and she was shining the most beautiful light. And I said to her, but how? And I asked her straight. <laughs> I'm that kind of counselor. How can you be hopeful under this situation? Tell me, what's going on? And she said to me, because God is with me, and there's nothing the enemy can take from me, even if he takes my life. There's a hope that God wants to give us that is bigger than everything, but we have to actively seek it. Um, and with that, I'm going to say an amen. <laughs> I suppose I should have a different ending. Um, but I'm going to pray for us. Father, I just thank you that you, you give us these promises that are sometimes very fluffy, or we think they are fluffy, and we feel they are far away, but they are not. Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. The promises you give us is eternally, but it's also, it's also for today, Lord. I pray over every person here tonight that they will really see your Holy Spirit and that they will receive this hope that is surpassing all understanding and all natural things, Lord. Not just the list of things we need, but you know what we need, and you are enough. Holy Spirit, I, I, I thank you for being present, and I thank you for living with us as well, that we can take you into our weeks and into our, and into our lives. We pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for listening to this message from Shofar Christian Church. We believe that you enjoyed your time with us, establishing God's kingdom and His glory in your life. For more info, call us on 012-362-1363. Email us, pretoria at shofaronline.org. Browse our website, www.shofaronline.org. Or like us on facebook.com forward slash Pretoria.